You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. I know you have seen the title of this video, and if you are a Hatsune Miku and Black Rock Shooter expert, you would know that these characters are completely different. Since we are doing a collaboration to celebrate Hatsune Miku's birthday, I decided to make Black Rock Shooter since I have made a classic Hatsune Miku before. It's pretty old, it's like one of my first ones, but hey, I'm still very proud of her. People who are new to Vocaloid can often confuse Black Rock Shooter and Miku together since they literally look so similar, but like I said, Black Rock Shooter and Miku are not the same character. The origins of Black Rock Shooter dates back to an illustration by Fuke Ryohei, also known as Hyuk, which he titled Black Rock Shooter. This inspired the music producer Ryo of Supercell to create a song called Black Rock Shooter using the Vocaloid singing synthesizer Hatsune Miku. This led into a beautiful collaboration of Hyuk, Supercell, and Hatsune Miku to create the popular music video with Hyuk providing the art and visuals, Supercell with the song, and Miku with her voice. The popularity of Black Rock Shooter kept skyrocketing that it led to an OVA, anime, manga, figures, and video games like Project Diva, and also its own Black Rock Shooter video game. My love and obsession for Black Rock Shooter, of course, would not have happened if Miku's voice wasn't used in the song. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with the Vocaloid Hatsune Miku, it is a singing synthesizer developed by Krypton under Yamaha's synthesizing technology. So basically, Miku is a robot you can program to sing. Many music producers use Vocaloid to create their music, and there are tons of voice banks to choose from other than Miku. Miku is widely popular because of the mascot design they gave her, since she is very cute and have a very anime-inspired design. This led to many professional and amateur music artists from around the world to use Miku as their muse and singer and even have her perform live concerts. With that being said, make sure to check out the other lovely Miku dolls by Moonlight Jewel, Doll Mill, Anastasia Custom, Color, HLE Crafts, and The Doll Fairy. And I have put all of their links down below. Let's get started with Purakuro Kushuta. So our victim today will be Apple White from Ever After High. The Ever After High doll aesthetic matches so well with Black Rock Shooter's main look, so this is just so perfect. Of course, we will need to change her hair color, so I'm going to go ahead and completely remove her hair. This is probably one of the fun parts to doll customizing. It's just so satisfying to remove all of these hair. Like, it's kind of gross, but like, it's kind of satisfying and good to see. I don't know. Now let's go ahead and remove her factory face with acetone, or you can actually also use a nail polish remover if it has acetone in it. Then let's start rerouting her hair. I'll be using black and blue acrylic yarn for her since Black Rock Shooter is usually depicted with blue-black hair. Since her hair is in pigtails, I'll only be rerouting the perimeter and the fringe area since yarn hair can add so much bulk when it's rerouted. To lock it in place, I'm using Fabri-Tac glue. And then you let that dry for a day or two. Then I'm taking my epoxy sculpt to add the scars on her torso. Usually she has them pretty flat and just, you know, drawn on obviously. But I wanted this doll to have a bit more of a raised scar. Then, after that cures, I went ahead and painted it to match her skin, and I also painted in the scars.
Using my plastic and metal pet brushes, I brush out the yarn to make it finer and fluffier. I first use the plastic brush to detangle and keep the length integrity. Then I use the metal brush to fine tune the yarn. After that, we can go ahead and straighten it with our hair straightener. Then I went ahead and trimmed the bangs to establish a good length. Now we can start with her face up. As usual, I have primed her face with Mr. Super Clear, and I start sketching the features I want with watercolor pencils. This is actually my third attempt at this face, not gonna lie. It wasn't drastic enough where I could have included it, but I just had a difficult time trying to get a serious look for Black Rock Shooter. Of course, I kept her makeup very minimal to none since she really doesn't have any. I just played with the shape and made her iris the main focal point of her eyes. I kept the rest of her face blushed a bit just to give it some life, but overall kept her very natural. I attempted a really anime-esque eyes for her, but it really didn't look right, which led me to changing it. Of course, using my white color pencil, I am artificially highlighting her nose and also her cupid's bow, just so that her skin looks more three-dimensional and it doesn't look so flat. And now it's time for the eyeliner, as always, it's the most favorite thing of mine to do. It's so satisfying in literally anything. My gosh. For those who listen to Vocaloid music, what are your favorite songs and Vocaloid producers? I really love Supercell by Supercell, which is the Hatsune Miku album, of course. And I actually also love Today is a Beautiful Day, like one of the Naruto endings are there. I just love it. it gives me the feels and the vibe. I love Y2Y and Reboot by Jimmy Thumb P. Uh, Once Upon a Me and Yume Yume by Deco27. And uh, I Am Your Diva by Azuma and so much more. I do listen to songs that uses Miku, Luka, and Gumi a lot. So I guess that's my preference. And now we are done with her face. Since BRS has one short and one long pigtail, I will be using the keratin weft method that I have used on Fluttershy before. So basically, I take a piece of yarn and glue the wefts on top of each other, obviously, layering them and covering the base of each weft. I then just added a pin to it so I can make it removable. And now we are completely done, so now we can move on to her outfit. She is wearing a black bikini top, so I just cut two triangle pieces of patent PVC and glued it onto a black cord. Then for her iconic jacket, of course, I did not make this. <laughs> I had help from the amazing deluxe designs. She even included the star design on the back and also the white stripes for her sleeves. And she also made the low-waisted shorts, of course. 
I did want to add the zipper detail, so I'm just taking this regular zipper and I sew it onto the jacket. This is definitely not functional, so it's just there for aesthetics. I'm also painting the small star in front of her jacket. And now let's move on to her belt. I'm taking this thicker pleather material and I'm cutting a long rectangular piece. I then add some overlaps to create the illusion that the belt is looped and a smaller rectangle for the buckle. Then I painted it all white to prime it before adding the silver paint. This will ensure that the silver will be very opaque. So I was trying to find a real buckle for this, like those jewelry buckles, but I just couldn't find the right size and if all else fails, paint it. <laughs> For her boots, I'm using this Monster High Boots, I think, I think, from Widona Spider. And I will be removing some of the details like the logo and some of the laces. I'm using an X-Acto knife for this, so be very careful if you guys try this. Always slice away from you, just to be safe. After that, I sanded it off with a low grit sandpaper to make it very smooth. This did take a while to do. Using the same pleather material, I glue it onto the boots to make a folded design. Then I paint everything with black glossy acrylic paint. For the details and soles, I use white and silver paint. I know people have missed it for a few videos now, so I'm giving her red bottoms. Oddly, it looks really good with her overall design. Even Black Rock Shooter needs a good pair of Christian Louboutins. She actually wears black gloves, so I'm just painting her hands black. Now let's get into the weaponry. I am sketching her black blade and cutting it into Warbler. Warbler! I then use my heat gun to activate the Warbler and melt the pieces together. I do use super glue just to completely secure everything. Then I used my silver spray paint to get the metallic look and I started painting in the details with regular acrylic paint. I do want the used and rugged look, so I gave the blade some rough patches and marks. And now we're done with the black blade. Using Warbler again, let's create her iconic rock cannon. During the OVA, this was depicted to be very small than the original artwork. Like, in the artwork by Huke, this was taller than Black Rock Shooter, so I wanted to recreate that scale with this cannon. Mm -hmm. 
I gotta say that this was so intimidating to start since the lines needed to be clean and symmetrical and oh my gosh, that's just a nightmare for me. And uh, that's probably why this roughly took me three days to figure out, but I love the results in the end. I had to re-watch the anime fights here on YouTube, there's like a compilation of just the fights from the anime, and listen to Miku's Black Rock Shooter over and over and over again to get really inspired to tackle this cannon. Like, it was a mess. So for the cannon, I mostly hot glued them together because um, heating them up really, really softens everything and it loses all of the structure that the Warbler has. So I am hot gluing everything together and then I go over everything with super glue just to secure everything in place. I think I was able to execute it properly. Um, it is a bit taller than my intention, but hey, um, it's time to paint. <laughs> the raw cannon is definitely a true gunmetal color, so I mixed in black, brown, and gold to achieve that. I then dry brushed everything black and silver to give it some age. And now we are done with the rock cannon and I am so in love with this by itself, like hello. I feel like this should be displayed in a rotating lazy Susan with a spotlight on top of it. Like it's just floating, like <laughs> Now let's dress up our Purakuroku Shuta.